Hey, it's Mercedes with Frameless Media. Today we are discussing BMF Season 3, Episode 4. Now in this episode, we have Meech talking things over with the plug, and the plug communicates to him that there is a shipment coming to Detroit. Now, there is a little bit of a language barrier here, but we do see later on that with this language barrier, there is a lot of miscommunication. Now, Meech hops on a plane, goes back to Detroit, meets up with BMF and lets them know that a shipment is on the way. He finally meets up with the pilot and soon discovers that he has 10 times more product than he anticipated. Now, this is a gold mine for most drug dealers, but for BMF, they only have 24 hours to process and distribute before Meech returns back to Atlanta. Now, in this situation, he has to strategize. He has to call in a lot of members from Ohio as well as Atlanta just to get the job done. And on top of that, there is a lot of conflict surrounding all of this. The first conflict is Terry and CPS. He's not really focused so much on BMF in this episode because he's so hell-bent on trying to resolve this issue with CPS. Now, we see him meet up with the social worker and everything goes well, but the icing on the cake is Markeisha stepping in. She knows the judge that's presiding over the case and decides to blackmail him, and in return, it works. Now, all Terry has to do is make an endorsement for the judge's re-election, and things are all good, so that's the end of that case. Second conflict is Henrietta and Detective Bryant. They're hearing word on the street that Meech is back in town, so they put two and two together and realize that Meech is only there because a shipment is coming. And she is hell-bent on revenge for what happened to her crew in the last episode. So she basically recruits Detective Bryant to surveillance, to watch where Meech's whereabouts are so that she can figure out where their stash house is at and basically ambush them. But everything goes wrong because Detective Brian, while he surveillance Meech, he gets pinned up by two cops. And on top of that, he gets arrested for having an unregistered gun. So that's the end of that conflict and the smooth selling for BMF where they can able to produce and distribute. They're able to get rid of all of the product. Now, that does mean they did have to basically cut the prices, kind of do some two for one specials just to get rid of it. And they succeeded. It's all good. They still made some money, but it wasn't a huge profit, but something is better than nothing, right? Meanwhile, in this episode, we have Lucille, Dr. Maurice, and Charles. Now, Lucille has been horny this whole episode pretty much all season long because you got two men that's fighting for your time, attention, and affection. We see Charles, he's pretty much most of the time flexing his muscles. And by the way, he is in good shape. He does look good now. But he's too busy trying to win over Lucille. Flexing muscles, he's half naked half the time. All of a sudden, he's jumping up wanting to do more housework and finish up the drywall that he's supposed to have been doing for years. And Lucille is really just falling head over heels for Dr. Maurice. I feel like she's done with Charles. She really wants to move forward with Maurice, but she has a lot of obstacles to overcome. The family dinner that Nikki prepares. Now, everything seems to be moving in the right direction. It seems like it's going to be a positive dinner. I thought this was like a great moment for them. But Nikki's plan was to call everybody out on their BS. Basically letting everybody know, look, y'all want what's best for me, but all of you have these issues and you're projecting them onto me and I'm just a kid. Like my parents are going through a divorce. Charles, you cheated. Mom, you got eyes for the doctor. Wanda, Terry's been cheating on you the whole time with this Jezebel Markeisha. And Meech, you have two kids by two different women, which one is dead um, from, from all of this madness that you guys have been going on. And on top of that, y'all are still drug dealing. Okay, so, but y'all want what's best for me. So I understand that she's a kid, but basically what she did was call everybody on their BS. And I hate to say it, but it's all facts. They all needed to hear that. And they need to be practicing what they're preaching. They need to fix their own issues before worrying about what Nikki's doing. So on top of that, it brings us to the end of the episode, which is Stax calling up Meech. Now he's calling, begging and pleading like, man, I'm so sorry that I turned my back on you. Can I, can I get back in with BMF? And that's all just a hoax because we all see in the end, Stax is teaming up with Glock to take out BMF, Meech, and Terry. And the episode ends. And I gotta say, overall, this episode compared to the last two, hands down, was a lot better. 
it was way better and I have to rate it an 8 out of 10. Now, I feel like Lucille needs to go ahead on and take that step with Maurice. We did see them flirting, kissing a little bit, but it couldn't go any further because Lucille stopped anything before it even happened. Charles needs to just be prepared for the divorce like it's over. You should have been stepping up and doing these things and you didn't do it. And so now Lucille is pulling for a divorce. Now you want to show up. Nikki, I feel like she is, you know, getting older and maturing, but she does have a lot of trauma going on especially with the death of her first boyfriend as she talks that over with Meech. And Meech and Terry, their dynamic, they work better together. But unfortunately, in this episode, Terry looked more like a sidekick. He always looks second in command when Meech is around. Seems like more people flock more towards Meech. I don't know what it is about him. It just seems like more people are see Meech as the boss and Terry just like the sidekick, unfortunately. But Stax and his bad wig, I don't see things ending that well. Even though you're making a deal with Glock, he can't really be trusted. This man is speaking Creole and calling you an idiot straight to your face. And again, this is another language barrier here where there's going to be a miscommunication in the end. But I don't see things ending very well for Stax. And looking forward to the next episode. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys for another review. Bye.